Hello viewers, welcome back to Learning Gallery. In the previous three videos, we have discussed how to explain a diagram, how to explain a graph, and how to explain a process. The audits formula was applied on all three types of questions and we were able to make desirable write-ups. If you are still not aware of the audits formula, please do watch the earlier videos. We are yet to discuss how to compare two or more pie charts or graphs or a combination of the two and how to explain a map. And yes, we will be doing that in the upcoming videos. But before we do that, I would like to take you all through some useful words and phrases that you may bring to use while attempting the writing task one. These words and phrases will help you pen down relevant content in intro and furthermore. Also, the verbs and adverbs that we discuss will define the rise and fall of figures appropriately when prefixed or suffixed in the statements. Intro statements in writing task 1 are meant to paraphrase the question. So you may begin this way. Here are some examples for you. So if you have to start the intro of a graph, you can probably start this way. According to the given graph, or as it is evident from the graph and so on. Now when it is a chart, you may begin this way. As presented through the given chart or as the chart illustrates. And there are a few more examples shared with you. And this is how we may start describing a line graph. The line graph displays or the given line graph clearly shows or plainly indicates or delineates. When it is a pie chart, we may start the intro this way. The given pie chart is shown dealing with or the pie chart discloses or reveals or compares and so on. Now how about a diagram? The diagram description may start with such an intro like the given diagram is a pictorial representation of the given diagram talks about or contains information about the diagram given above details the process of and so on. Appropriate presentation of the main trend, showing comparisons and contrasting data, and presenting the logical flow of a process shall ensure a high band score. So for this, let us also add a few words to our vocab. Except for processes and maps, you will be playing around figures in almost every task one. So when you see figures that need to be described and detailed in your write-up, try to use the following words or verbs. So when there is a rise in some figures, you may use verbs like the numbers increased, climbed or escalated to. Well, there are a few more examples given below. And when the figures fall, you may use verbs like this way. It may be noticed that the figures declined or decreased or the figures reduced to this and this in so and so year. There are many other examples mentioned here. You may take a note of them. Now when the figures are stable, not showing any steep fall or rise during a period, then we may use verbs like we can see no change or the figures remain static or constant during the year 2020. Try using the other examples also mentioned here. Now there could be ups and downs and comparisons. So uh, you can describe them this way. The figures doubled or kept on fluctuating. Comparisons can be shown like it doubled, it halved, tripled and so on. When you want to describe a change, use of adverbs becomes essential. So pick any from the list given below and make a wise use of them 
wherever applicable. For example, there was a dramatic increase in the number of cases or a sharp rise in the number of cases can be noticed. Try using the other adverbs listed below too. Comparing and contrasting cannot be done without the use of certain specific words. The given list will make it an easy task. So you may write, A is more than B or similar to B or much larger than B, depending on what the graph states. Also, certain figures given in the charts or graphs are not exact. So you have to find the closest, the closest figure to it and you can use these words as a prefix or a suffix. For example, it was approximately 22% or almost 24 years old and so on. Now whatever we have learned till now can be applied when showing percentage. There was an increase or decrease or it dropped etc. So there could be a, like a 5% increase, 25% decrease or it stood exactly at 45%. And when it comes to fractions, fractions need to be mentioned when you are attempting a pie chart. However, use of fractions is possible even with other figures and percentages as shown below. For instance, anything below 10% can be called a tiny fraction. Figures nearly to one fourth may be called a quarter. Figures close to three fourths may be called nearly three quarters and so on. Proportion or portion is another term that is commonly used here. Let us see how. 2% could be written as a tiny portion or a very small proportion, whereas 70% could be a large proportion. 89% we can write it this way, a very large portion. Now let's talk about linking the sentences. To link your sentences, there could be a struggle to find the right word. So you may try using these words. Here's how you may use them. In contrast to the above mentioned statement, or you may write, on the other hand, we can see the figures falling steeply in the year, this and this, and so on. And last but not the least, when you are done with the write-up and just looking for a statement to conclude, you may use these words. It may be concluded, the overall trend, to sum up, to conclude, we may close with an agreement. And yes, we may close with an agreement that yes, we need to practice for our IELTS exam. So my dear viewers, I'm sure that this vocab session will be able to make your write-up stronger and better than before, thereby reducing your struggle to hunt the appropriate words. Happy learning!